Rainfall rates are with these, and this doesn't mean you're going to be getting this much rain, but it means if it was, it's coming down in buckets at times, best way to put it. So as far as uh, right around here, Leon Springs, rainfall rates right there, about four and a half inches per hour. So again, that's that's kind of a, a gully washer if it were to sit there in one spot. Obviously, that is moving along. Also over there, right around Lake Hills, you've got those little bullseyes, if you will, 4.6 inches per hour as far as the rainfall rates. Otherwise, it's not that heavy. So the good thing is it has been moving along. Now, as far as some of these that are sort of uh, kind of training one right uh, in behind the other one, that's where we are seeing a little bit of potential for some flooding, especially, say, uh, up here well up to the the northeast up around San Marcos you've got this larger area and some of these cells that have been going one right on top of the other and so yes you might see some low water crossings uh, some ponding on the roads that's what this would do as it's coming down at the rate of about four inches per hour but you won't be getting necessarily that much rain the other good news about this all is the fact that most everybody is seeing some rain it goes all the way in our eastern counties obviously it's not completely completely filled in, but just enough. Unfortunately, off to the west, there's not as much rain out there. Now, computer models are going to continue to have everything move from west to east throughout the day. And as this works its way off to the east, notice how these lines sort of forms up over here. And then we'll start to see some showers or excuse me, some thunderstorms mixed in off here to the east. And this is going to be mid to late morning and then into early afternoon. And when that happens, that's when some of those could be strong to potentially severe. Now on the back side of that front moves through wind advisory goes into effect at noon up until six o'clock. And this does not include San Antonio, although we will still be seeing some pretty windy conditions around here, but the advisory is off there to the west and then further off to the west again, where you're not getting any rain, unfortunately, down here right along the, the Rio Grande primarily. And we're going to be seeing those winds out of the west to northwest, 20, 30 miles per hour gusts, 35, close to 40, 45 miles per hour. And so red flag warnings are in effect because it has been so dry out there and you're not getting any rain from any of this. And oh, then we want to check out uh, traffic here in just a moment. But the timing of this is the front moves through later on this morning and then we will start to uh, clear on out. So we've had a lot of problems on the roads. Stephen, still issues out there? You know, uh, I was just checking our TransGuide guide cameras and uh, information from TxDOT is actually showing we are seeing a little bit of imp improvement actually. Now, I can't say the same here, unfortunately, for 90 at Loop 410. We still have a pretty uh, serious scene out there, a crash that's been reported. Now, remember those eastbound lanes along 90, we have a lot of folks that come in this early to San Antonio from uh, in the morning, so we are going to see a buildup take place, and that's exactly what the same story is here on the map. 90 east, if you're traveling in from Castro, you have to watch out, especially as you approach Loop 410. We do have flashing lights out there. Now that buildup is expected to probably linger around for a while, even after this crash does clear, because again, a lot of folks are waking up early, traveling into San Antonio. So we will see that buildup again, stay around for a little while longer. But let's take you over here back to 281 southbound at Hildebrand Avenue. Remember, I told you this was reported as a serious crash. Now I actually have better news to report out here. That crash is actually already cleared out, but what we haven't seen clear out yet is that buildup and remember that's that curve that we would try to warn you about all the time guys you want to make sure you slow down before you approach it so that way you can get to your destination safely and of course on time but really that buildup is really going to be what's troubling drivers at this hour I was just checking out some of the trans guide cameras and it does look like things have cleared out and really uh, as a good update from text dots some of the crashes that we saw that were lingering around for quite a while those are already cleared out so only the major one that we have right now is going to be along 90 at 410 but you can see now now that we give you a view of the metropolitan area, uh, slowdowns are expected. But Justin, with these wet roads, uh, it's definitely going to make the commute tricky for a lot of folks still. I can imagine. And there's a lot of people out and about this morning. Of course, uh, work and school, the, the, the thick of the commute underway. Uh, so just be careful out there, as Stephen said. I want to show you a product we have on our radar. This is pretty cool. So we can take a look at some of the uh, power outages around the area. And we can get numbers on some of these counties. Now, they're round numbers, but we're showing about 1,500 people here in San Antonio without power, and you're probably asking why. Well, the winds weren't that strong. We did get some gusty winds, but the winds weren't strong enough to cause power outages. Why is this happening? That's because once we get a lot of dust and uh, ickiness uh, collecting on some of the lines, which we see in these drop periods where we go for a long time without rain, and then you get a little bit of light rain, the, the lines can arc. 
and you uh, can get some of these transformer issues. So that's why we're getting some power outages, I think, here around Bear County in the surrounding areas. We can take a look at some of the other counties as well and get an idea of some of the power outages. So 600 there in Guadalupe County, but it looks like Bear County is kind of leading the way here. Uh, if, if you're without power, I know CPS is working feverishly to get that back online and get things uh, taken care of. But notice, we're starting to see some of those white lines on there. That represents mining strikes, so we're starting to see a little bit more of that, and that's what we kind of thought we might see as the morning wears on. A little bit more thunderstorm activity, so a little more robust thunderstorms. Uh, not necessarily severe, but some good rain. In this area, for instance, Seguin down to Stockdale, that's good rain right there. That's gonna probably amount to pretty quick half an inch as it moves out to the north. In fact, let's put this into motion. And uh, you can see these storms are, are moving pretty quickly, but I would imagine there's quite a bit of, of rain mixed in there as they do move out to the north. Here around San Antonio, we've got a little bit of a break, as Mike mentioned. We're kind of in between uh, pieces of energy here, but there is more gathering off to the west. So we're not done with the rain yet. I would imagine around 11 a.m. That's when kind of the backside of this moves through. That's when we could get some heavier rain. And then after that, uh, this all kind of quiets down. But if you're watching right now, you're getting ready for uh, school or work, yeah, you do want the umbrella, and there's going to be some of these pockets you see here on the north north side that develop and then move right along. So the windshield wipers will go real fast for about 30 minutes or 30 seconds, I should say, and then you'll drive out of that uh, downpour, and you'll just be dealing with some wet roads. Let's uh, switch over to the future cast real quick. And once again, if you missed this earlier, this is kind of the timeline here, 11 o'clock. We get the back side of this line of showers and storms. This is where we could see a couple strong storms, but we're not anticipating a lot of severe weather. Gusty winds would probably be the main threat. And then by the afternoon, this is pushing east. Now, I will say once this line gets east of us, that's when it could really start to crank up and develop quite a few severe storms. And we'll keep an eye on our eastern counties. Uh, the other big story will be the gusty winds. Gusts to 35, maybe even 40 miles per hour behind this line this afternoon. So it gets really gusty and those winds stay up most of tonight into early tomorrow morning once it gets kind of chilly. So wind chills may be an issue Wednesday morning. This is 10 o'clock, still showing gusts 20 to maybe 30 miles per hour. So wind advisories in effect. That doesn't include San Antonio, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be windy here. And then we have the red flag warnings out west where there's going to be a high fire danger. Here's the weather timeline. Good chance of rain early front comes through, then it's just windy into the afternoon. Temperatures make it up to around 62 or so. And clearly I need to work on my typing. <laughs> Tuesday does not have two Ds and I just noticed that. That's what happens when you type fast, by the way. Uh, here's the big picture. And this is what's uh, pretty wild about this whole system is that uh, we're getting some really good snow right now across parts of Lubbock and Amarillo, maybe even as far south as Midland Odessa. But this is going to amount to quite a bit of snow, I think, Lubbock over to Wichita Falls. So if you have plans to travel in that direction, know it is going to be a winter wonderland up there. Otherwise, the rest of the state, I mean, when's the last time we've seen the entire state of Texas basically underneath a shield of precipitation? That is awesome. Uh, that is the case right now. This upper level low moves through Texas. And uh, temperatures 49 degrees right now, 50 New Braunfels, 49 Hondo. Again, we'll be up near 60 this afternoon. And right around San Antonio, I'd say right at the 50 degree mark for the most part. And uh, we'll start to pull up some storm pins. We don't have one right now, but if you have any pictures you want to send in, uh, we'd love to see them. And there's a look at the extended forecast. We do want to give you that in case you're planning out your week. 60 tomorrow. 56 Thursday, 59 Friday, and chance of showers on Saturday, Mike. Justin, I'm going to defend you and say you did that on purpose as a lesson to teach kids. Make sure you double check your homework. Yes. Yeah. So that yeah. that yeah, there's method. They to should have so. spell check on. <laughs> We're working on that. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's get back over to radar. I'm going to back up through the graphics here, so forgive me, but we're going to get back to radar and give you one last update uh, on what's going on. And by the way, if you're just joining us. This is what's called what we like to call an app cast. So basically, since we can't come to you on TV and, you know, these days we just want weather when we want it. We want it on demand. So we'll uh, we'll give it to you here on the uh, KSAT weather app if you're joining us there or uh, on the uh, KSAT app or wherever you want to watch online as well. We're, we're, we're streaming there. We can give you the latest on what's going on. So. Hang on, uh, we had a little problem here. Let me restart the show for you. So, oh, is it uh, locking up on us? It no, we had the um, the uh, AR punched oh. up there. So there you go. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Uh, yes, uh, Mike Ostage here in the studio with me, along with uh, Stephen Cavazos, who's 
covering traffic. He's been a busy man this morning. Uh, this is a, just another look at what's going on. And we have kind of, I don't want to say lines, because we don't really have lines, but kind of two areas here. One east of San Antonio, one just to the west. The heavy stuff starting to set up around Floresville and uh, eastern parts of Bear County. Now you see these little kind of little waves of heavier rain. Uh, those, uh, those will produce some really good downpours. And uh, we looked earlier, but I think it's worth looking one more time at some of the rain rates. Uh, so we'll stop this, stop the motion on it, and then we can take a look. And where you see some of these purple colors, that's uh, probably three or four inches per hour. Uh, where you see some of the green colors, that's about one inch per hour. So if this were to sit over you for an hour, you may get an inch of rain. It's just not going to do that. I would love to see widespread one inch rainfall totals. Don't know if we're going to get there. It's going to be tough. Uh, Sarah, meteorologist Sarah Spivey and I were talking about this yesterday. Could we get up to one inch in San, in San Antonio? It's been, we've been so drought stricken. Where are we going to get there? We were hopeful. I don't know. It's going to be a really close call. And uh, as we look at the uh, rainfall totals so far, now we know at the airport that it has been right at about two tenths. So as uh, we look at some of the numbers, these are estimates, shows a tenth of an inch. We've got a little bit more than that. Uh, where you see some of these green colors, though, that's more on the order of three tenths of an inch and maybe seven tenths of an inch over towards Seguin. So it looks like the heavier totals have been east of San Antonio. But the hope is that as this uh, next kind of wave moves through that uh, we'll get some heavier rain here. We're just not seeing it at the moment. And you see this area here gathering down to the south. That's a pretty good looking thunderstorm. Hopefully uh, we don't get any warnings today. I can't rule it out, but we're hoping that it's just, it's just rain, maybe some lightning and thunder, but uh, it does uh, cause a little bit of, uh, of uh, some issues with it being the morning commute, of course. There's the latest radar. Do we want to go over to uh, Stephen one more time? Do you have any updates, Stephen? Anything else changing, getting worse, yeah, getting better? Better update here along 90 at 410. Justin, within the last few moments, as you were giving us that forecast, we do see that those flashing lines have cleared out, but they're still at backup. And remember, I mentioned that that's because a lot of folks are making their way into the Alamo City. So the commute looks normal on this side of town. You can see that buildup that stretched out there along 90. So again, as folks are making their way into the Alamo City around 410, you'll see a little bit more of that slowdown. Down, but it does look like that crash has cleared out. Now, for a moment, there were no crashes being reported by tech stop, but within the last few moments, uh, something else came up and it's right in this spot that unfortunately there are no trans guide cameras here. So we're seeing that crash along loop 1604 eastbound at Nacogdoches Road, but both the east and westbound lanes there at 1604 are seeing a pretty big buildup. But again, unfortunately, it doesn't look like there are any trans guide cameras out there that could show us the conditions, but we're going to comb through some of those cameras, find out exactly what what other areas look like in town in just a minute, but let's give you a quick look at the metropolitan area on the map and it's still the same story guys. We have plenty of slowdowns that are taking place right now and that is because we are in the heart to the thick of morning commute. So folks are trying to get to their destination on time and safely. But remember the commute has just been a messy one this morning. We have slowdowns we've had crashes. We've had a uh, wet road, so it's just been a terrible Tuesday for traffic, but we want to make sure you are prepared. So obviously that's why we are doing this streamcast here. So to give you up to give you those updates while Good Morning America is on. But as I mentioned, let's get back to these trans guide cameras so we can show you what else is looking like. US 90, a couple saw a few flashing lights out over there. We'll find out what's going on. But 281 to San Pedro, the commute looks a lot better. But you notice that, yeah, a lot of those wet roads out there. 1604 at Pat Booker seems to be a quiet spot. A better shot here at 281 at Hildebrand. But uh, you mentioned, uh, Justin, a lot of it was because of the dirt and the, uh, the, the, the grind that had built up. So that's likely why we're seeing some of these buildups and crashes. Yeah, I like to call it grime. I don't know grime. if that's the right word for it, but grime. grimy. Okay. <laughs> the roads are kind of grimy. Grimy road. Yeah, and when you mix the rain, it just gets uh, it yep. gets sort of slick. I, you know, uh, I'm not complaining if, if anyone from the city is listening, but along I-10 out near 1604, man, the lanes are really hard to see when it rains. And I always wonder, man, that's got to be a little bit dangerous. But if you're, if you're traveling, just you know, be really careful this morning, as Stephen is suggesting, with all this going on. Now, uh, just within the last five minutes or so, we've seen these, this activity kind of flourish a little bit in the sense that it's starting to get a little bit heavier. We're starting to see spots where the, uh, the thunderstorms are producing maybe just a little bit heavier rain. That's down around Floresville. And there's an occasional lightning, lightning strike. It hasn't been widespread. We're not getting, you know, very electrical uh, storms 
but uh, with some of this activity, you're going to see one or two lightning strikes, maybe a clap of thunder. And it's right around Forestville where, yeah, we got one little lightning strike there uh, starting to move in around Forestville. You know what we can do? We can turn on the lightning counter. Hey, we've only got two. Uh, it's not that much. Uh, it's just basically good downpours, which is exactly what you would want in a situation like this. But we can zoom in a little bit closer to the city of Floresville, and uh, this is just starting to come in uh, to the city. It'll be near Floresville High School shortly, uh, right there along uh, 10th Street, if you're familiar with the city of Floresville. Uh, shout out to Mia Montgomery from Floresville, I might add, of course, um, as we look at uh, the city of San Antonio. Is she watching this morning, do you think? She might be. She might be. I gave her a shout out, so. She's know. the one that, that caught the uh, misspelling on the Tuesday, so yeah. Yes, I guess she is. Hey Mia, how you doing? <laughs> uh, let's take a look at this uh, little cell right here. This is within the city of San Antonio, and that's right along I-10. I-10 near uh, Frio, which is where we had a crash earlier, as Stephen reported. So some more pockets of heavy rain starting to track back into San Antonio. I think we're gonna see a little bit more of this as uh, we get later into the morning. And this little cell looking fairly healthy. It is moving so very fast, uh, but it is moving up towards the Castroville area near Lacoste and uh, has a nice little core to it. Uh, not picking up any lightning strikes, but I would not be surprised if there are some strikes within there. And this, this stuff is all moving pretty fast. Would you say about uh, 30 miles per hour, Mike? At least, yeah. Let me uh, look at my... We'll put a track on it. Yeah. You know what, let me uh, clear that off. And we're gonna zoom out a little bit because uh, these things are moving so fast, we need some more room to track them. Here we go, put the track on it. 40, uh, I got one that says 42 knots is uh, moving off to the north northeast. All right, let's do 35 here. So okay. Castroville, 750. Taft High School would be about 811 this morning. Brennan High School, about 807. This little cell here, if it holds together. And these do have a history of just, you know, again, racing north and northeast, uh, pushing through the west side of San Antonio. But that's just one example. There's several more of, cell, of these kind of cells out there this morning uh, with this activity as this upper low moves in. So while North Texas is seeing snow, we're getting the thunderstorms. And I think as we get later into this afternoon, it's this area out here that uh, we're going to really watch. I'd say uh, Gonzales, Cuero, Yorktown, Victoria. Oh man, that's a horrible line. Um, that's where I think severe weather will probably start to kick in a little bit later this afternoon. So we'll be watching that. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey will be in here later today and have the latest on uh, what's going on there. But as we look at the big picture, we now have 15 total lightning strikes. So the, again, the lightning activity is starting to pick up just a little bit as all this uh, moves north. And Mike, I think, you, do you have a cut-in coming up here quickly? Uh, we're gonna be coming up here in just about uh, five minutes or so. But five you minutes, know, you were yeah. talking about how the potential is there in our eastern counties for severe weather. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people only associate severe storms when we have, you know, spring and summer when it's Correct. really, really hot, really, really humid. But this is a perfect example that when you get one of these fronts moving on through here, you can get severe storms even when it is in the 40s right now and it feels like winter. And the reason for that, Mike, since you brought that up, is because, uh, and let's see, I had the uh, convective outlook in there somewhere. Maybe I didn't put it in there. But the reason for that, Mike, is uh, because we have a very dynamic system. So we have that energy right over Texas. So that gives us lift. And then we have some pretty good wind shear setting up. So you don't necessarily need heat and humidity in this case when you have the good lift and then you have uh, winds going different directions as you stack up through the atmosphere. That can often help to create severe weather. And that's why we think really along the Texas coast today, that's where uh, severe weather could be kind of at its peak. Uh, and some of our far eastern counties certainly are in that uh, in that realm where we could see a couple strong ones and we'll be keeping close eyes on that. Uh, this is the swath of snow, by the way, Lubbock up to Amarillo and uh, parts of Oklahoma. Now Wichita Falls probably seeing a little bit of snow as they're starting to get the switch over. Good to see so much rain though across uh, Texas and hopefully some of the lakes and aquifers uh, begin to fill up. Uh, we'll be tracking the aquifer today too, see where it goes. Uh, and of course, we can get a good rainfall total at the airport, that'd be nice too. Mike, you got anything yeah, else? That would, no, that would be absolutely fantastic. I was talking about that earlier this morning as far as um, 
Medina Lake with some of these showers that have been moving through Medina County up and toward Medina Lake. That would be absolutely wonderful if all of this would uh, just continue and sit right on top of that. So let's go back here. First of all, and you were talking about the wind that picks yeah. up later on today. I'm just uh, kind of going back here in toward radar to see uh, what's going on. And once again, we are talking about right around Medina Lake. So come on showers and thunderstorms. And there's that one cell. And again, that thing is clipping along at a good 42 knots, so do the math, and that's about 46, 47 miles per hour. So it's moving very quickly, and that's the the one thing. I guess the the beneficial thing is that these storms aren't just sitting in one spot. Because if you had those four and a half inch rainfall rates per hour and the thing was sitting there, then you would run into uh, some of the, the flooding issues. Now down here and off to the east, as we were talking about, from Floresville, Elmendorf, up in towards Seguin, these have also been almost as we say, kind of training. So just in that one line right there, continuing to work their way up to the uh, north and to the northeast. I have to check my watch here because we do have another cut in coming up uh, on Good Morning America in just a few moments. Control room, can you get six minutes? OK, so we've got about six minutes. So right before that, I want to toss over to uh, Stephen. And do you have any uh, any updates on some of the accidents? Because I know it's been just a mess on the it, roads. It this has, morning. Mike. You know, we've talked about this uh, for quite a while already, right? But uh, it does look like things have improved a little bit there along 410 at Jackson. Of course, those roads are still wet, guys. So expect to see some of that anywhere you go this morning. But uh, as I mentioned, we do have better news to report out there. While we did see our fair share of crashes, and I'm talking at least at least 10 crashes this morning. Things have cleared out for the most part, but can't say the same here. Unfortunately, loop 16 to 4 eastbound in Nacogdoches Road. We did have uh, we do have a crash or part of me that is reported. Now this is again in that spot. No trans guide cameras in that area, unfortunately, but those east and westbound lanes of 1604 are already seeing a pretty big slowdown, and I think that's really going to cause drivers a pretty big issue there if you're trying to wake up and maybe uh, just head out the door in the next few moments. But let's give you a wide look at the map. Uh, it's just just slowdowns right now. Thankfully, no major issues are being reported by tech stop, but you can see the big issue, at least for now, will be those wet roads. It's going to be those slowdowns. We are still working our way through the morning commute. So, of course, we're going to have to keep a very close eye on this uh, on the roadways throughout the morning. But let's show you another look around town 90 loop F, loop 410. You can see a better shot there, uh, but a little bit of a slowdown there at 410 at Gulabita. That could be just normal traffic. Uh, 37 at Houston's not too bad in those north and southbound lanes, but I did mention this earlier as well. A lot of these trans guide cameras have just all in the no trans guide camera camera. Pardon me is showing any wet roads or dry roads. Pardon me. We're seeing plenty of wet roads, but we have not seen any dry roads out there. And as I am looking through our text dot site, I did see that there was another update uh, of a new crash that was reported along 281 at almost drive. I'm trying to see if we can find a shot from Transguide, but uh, we are going to work to bring you that information, of course, throughout the morning. But again, it's just safe to assume that anywhere you go, those roads are going to be wet and it could still cause a pretty serious crash if you're not careful enough, guys. Yeah, just just to reset real quick, if you're uh, just now joining us, we are uh, streaming live on our website and on the KSAT weather app. And uh, we are just basically wanting, we want to keep you up to date on what's going on with the, the rain and, and storms. If you're watching GMA, keep watching GMA, but you can stream us live here. And it's not a severe situation. It's not anything that you have to be too, too concerned about. But as Stephen said, the roads are wet. We've had some crashes and we're getting some good downpours. So if you're moving out the door, kids are probably at school at this point. Uh, but if you're moving out the door this morning, then uh, be prepared for these uh, downpours. They're about, what do you say, 11, 12 o'clock, Mike? Starts clear out here in town. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the other nice thing too is the fact that we're getting some rain, so it's nice to talk about this. Uh, since up to this point, we have only had one one hundredth of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport this year. Yeah. And now we twenty one hundredths. Hey, <laughs> it's like watching water boil. You know the old <laughs> saying. I'm like sitting there looking at, it, just waiting for it to go up, and it's uh, it's inching up at the well. And uh, and again, most of that came better term. most most of that came earlier this morning, and a lot of the uh, you know some of the computer models we look at the ones that that show what the the quantitative the five dollar word quantitative precipitation forecast the QPF we call it had it at anywhere from say half an inch to an inch here in town, which I think is pretty much going to play out because the rain off there to the uh, the west of us is going to continue. Oh, 22 hundredths of an inch now, Mike. 22. So we're adding up. See, Get excited. So 
<laughs> so right here at the airport, we've had just a couple of uh, light little showers that have moved on through and it's just enough to add into the rain gauge. Obviously nothing out there right now. Here's this one little spot and we got a couple, uh, at least a lightning strike that is being detected just to the north of Castroville. That's that cell that was down there in Divine. We've been talking about it moving up to the north to northeast at a good uh, 40, 45 miles per hour, maybe even a little bit quicker than that. And that's why that's racing up. So right around SeaWorld and we're going to about to do the cut in you said. About two minutes away, so we've got two minutes until our we are going to break away for Good Morning America for the cutting. We'll still be uh, streaming there. You can watch what we do live on the, the weather app as well. Down to the southeast, we've got some uh, pretty good cells as well. But this one, and again, working its way up to the north at about, uh, let's call it, 45 miles per hour. So this will continue moving off to the north northeast and uh, boy, it's really going to be cruising on up there. And so uh, Bernie High School right about uh, 830 at Bernie 830 Geneva School 830 as well. Great Forest right there around 820 and then it's just going to be grazing just to the west of say Leon Valley and right outside of 1604. So we'll be getting into the northwestern portion of Bear County that cell right there and then we've got more off and again we're talking about Medina Lake hopefully that gets filled up and then also we've had a lot up here not necessarily in and around Canyon Lake some have moved through there further north at Seguin but this big area and this is one of the largest areas of the kind of heavier downpours if you will that are working right there through Wilson County and moving their way on up to the north so we are going to pause for a moment as we kind of reset and get ready to do our cut in here on Good Morning America. So bear with us. We're going to continue to stream online, but we're going to cut away just for a second to do our cut in. So hang on. Time check. We are now at 756 and yeah, the problems still remain on the roadways, but we are seeing a little bit of a bill uh, improvement. Pardon me. Uh, check out 281 at Hildebrand. We did have a pretty serious crash that was reported there by our friends at TechStot, but uh, notice that the roads are still wet. Those cameras from TransGuide uh, have plenty of droplets on them. So we've said this before. It's safe to assume that the roads are going to be wet anywhere you go. 35 at Judson, you're seeing a pretty big slowdown and that looks like it could be in the southbound lanes, but let's get you to the map because because as I mentioned, we still do have some problems out there on the roadway. Loop 1604 eastbound and Akadochus Road. We do have a problem that's been causing some issues for drivers. Now there is a buildup in both the east and westbound lanes of 1604, but unfortunately, guys, we can't show you the trans guide cameras out there because there are not any that are working. So the conditions, while we're not able to look at them, we're able to see it there on our map. A huge buildup in both the east and westbound lanes, and that crash is still being reported right there in Akadochus Road. But let's get you back here into town because as I mentioned, earlier, uh, we do also have a new crash that popped up here along 281 southbound at Olmos Drive, causing a pretty big delay for drivers. Now, this is the second crash that's been reported along 281. We did have one around Hildebrand that was causing some issues, but other than that, the roads are still wet out there. But Mike, we've been watching things closely throughout the morning, and uh, unfortunately, things haven't really improved on the roads. No, and uh, you know, we've had some breaks in the uh, the rain here and there, which is the situation we picked up about uh, 2200 of an inch of rain. I've got that graphic up there. Sorry about that because we're still uh, live streaming as well. Now the rain is going to continue to work its way off to the east as the uh, the morning rolls on. And as it does work its way off to the east, we are going to see the potential for some stronger storms off there to the east, and then we'll see some clearing off to the uh, west. Also, winds are going to be very, very strong today, and uh, we do have wind advisories for our western counties. Goes into effect at noon up until 6 o'clock, and then right along the Rio Grande, a red flag warning because you're really not getting any of this rain that's moving on through the rest of the area. And and so we're going to have a high temperature today up to 62 and more sunshine this afternoon.
Yeah. All right, welcome back. If you're uh, joining us on the line or on the KSAT weather app, we are uh, here again just talking about, chatting about the weather. Uh, nothing severe this morning, just uh, good rain for most of San Antonio. And uh, we've, uh, we've been blessed with the widespread rain on the radar. It's been so long since we've seen that. I do want to show you very quickly, this is the power outages that we're looking at, that we're looking at here. So let me first pause it. Uh, and then we'll uh, take a look at some of the power outages that we've seen here across Bear County. Now up to 3,000, that number's growing. And you may be asking why we haven't had a whole lot of lightning. We haven't had a whole lot of gusty winds. Why on earth would we have power outages? My guess, and I haven't got this confirmed, but my guess is that uh, a lot of times when we come out of drought and we have some light rain on top of these dusty lines, they, uh, they can sometimes arc and uh, it causes power outages um, we've seen that in the past. That would be my guess of what's going on this morning. But there are uh, several thousands of customers at this point without uh, power here in Bear County. So that's one thing we're keeping an eye on this morning. Otherwise, it's the radar, uh, which has been so very quiet for so long. And uh, nice to see that we have actual rain on the radar this morning. Uh, you know, unfortunately, San Antonio, at least the, the middle part of San Antonio, is kind of caught in no man's land here. We have an area of rain out to the west, then an area of rain to the east. But this rain you see out west does work its way into San Antonio here over the next hour or so. And really by midday, we could start to see a few more thunderstorms. So let's put the map back in motion. These storms, these little individual cells are racing off to the north and uh, northeast at about 40 miles per hour or so. But we have seen some periodic lightning strikes. We can turn on the lightning counter. About 22, so that number starting to pick up some, which tells us the intensity of the rain is beginning to pick up in some of these cells. And it's uh, it cells like this one on the west side that uh, you really uh, start to notice kind of those heavier cores. I don't think there's any hail or anything like that, but it's just going to be really good heavy rain just there just east of Rio Medina on the Medina Bear County line. <coughs> that is working north towards the Holotus area, almost due north at this point. Uh, and that little core right there, that's where you're going to see probably some blinding rain. It will not last very long, probably about 30 seconds to a minute. And then this uh, cell moves right along. Uh, but around SeaWorld, getting some rain, 1604 on the northwest side, rain is coming down. And then uh, down towards Elmendorf, you're starting to get some good heavy rain as, as well. This is coming on the, uh, the south side there along 1604 seeing a cell lifting north towards your area and then right around Elmendorf and Calaveras Lake, some good rain. Uh, we'll zoom a little bit closer on the city of Elmendorf. And there's 1604 right there. And you have Cassiano Road that intersects there, 1604. That's right about where you're going to get uh, some of that heavy rain. And then there's 181 right there. So some heavy rain starting to move in along 181 too. Uh, Calaveras Lake, you just had a good heavy shower pass by. And now it's working up towards East Central High School. So for those kiddos, which are, they're probably already at school at this point, uh, but the heavy rain is coming down. And uh, umbrella, good idea this morning, no matter where you are across South Texas, just based on uh, the forecast and what we're seeing here, it's just going to be uh, pretty widespread. Uh, up around Lone Oak, uh, seeing some rain there. Atkins over towards Carpenter, uh, the rain's coming down pretty good. And then Lavernia and Sutherland Springs, this is probably where the heaviest of the rain is at this hour, right along Highway 87 here. In between Lavernia and Sutherland Springs, you're getting some very good heavy rain. Uh, there's U.S. Highway 87 West. We'll pause it. And what I like to do here is look at some of the rainfall rates and where you see some of these. Oh, man, see, right when I do that, the uh, jumps on me. There. Okay, so there's some of the heavier rain right around Sutherland Springs, estimating six inches per hour. So that number has picked up since we last talked. We... Uh, looked at some of the thunderstorms earlier. They were on the line of three to four inches. Now they're up to six inches per hour. That does not mean you're going to get six inches of rain. Uh, if we were to sit there for an hour, yes, but these storms are moving right along, but they are starting to pick up in intensity. That much we can tell uh, by these rainfall rates and just the overall look of the radar. Uh, we'll zoom out some, and this is kind of the uh, area right here where the rain is pretty heavy, but it also uh, is uh, fairly heavy down here along uh, well, near the Poth area in Floresville, there along 181, uh, just to the west of Falls City, seeing some good rain there. And this eventually will work its way up across 181 uh, Poth 
Uh, Fall City, Carn City could get some rain out of that, and that may make its way up towards Floresville, which is already seeing uh, some of the good rain now. Uh, so that's the latest uh, east of San Antonio. And then as we look west, folks up around Bernie getting some rain. We'll zoom in a little bit closer here on I-10. Bernie, Scenic Oaks, down the Leon Springs. The rain has come in this morning. And if you're on the northwest side of San Antonio, the rim, uh, Stone Oak starting to get a little bit of rain. Nice little cell there right around Johnson High School. Uh, we could go on and on because you're going to see these little cells just everywhere. Again, nothing severe. That's the beauty of all this is uh, it's just raining. <laughs> and that's what we love. Uh, one more time, there's the big picture. More and more lightning strikes now. We've got 24 total. And what I want to do is show you the forecast here. So this is important. Uh, we get rain through about 11 a.m. This is sped up a little bit since the last time we showed it. This is one of our pretty reliable computer models. And it shows that line of heavy rain perhaps moving east of San Antonio by 11 a.m. So we may be a little bit ahead of schedule here looking at the radar. That kind of makes sense. Still some showers holding on. But I'd say by lunchtime, rain's done here in San Antonio. And then it is pushing east towards our eastern counties this afternoon around 2 o'clock. That's when we have to be concerned about some severe weather. Not only that, we get gusty ones in the back side of it. So 4 o'clock, gusts to 35 miles per hour here in San Antonio. I think we could see some gusts 30, 35 through about 10 o'clock, and then the winds will start to die down. Still breezy, though, overnight. Let's talk about the severe weather risk. So this area in pink, that's where you have, you start to see the better risk for severe weather. So Seguin, Forestville, Carn City, Gonzales, and I would say that's, probably within the next couple of hours. If we're going to see anything uh, severe wise, it's going to be in these areas and again, probably pretty soon. But as that line progresses east towards the Texas coast, then we start to deal with more severe weather this afternoon. And this is going to be south of Houston, El Campo, Victoria over to Goliad. We'll have to watch the radar closely. There is a lot of wind this year. We've got a lot of energy coming into Texas. And so those two things combined uh, will help to create some pretty rowdy storms, it looks like, uh, later today. Wind advisories, in effect, that's not a surprise with those gusty winds we showed you. And then on top of that, we've got a lot of still dry conditions out west. They just didn't get much rain here in Del Rio, Brackenville, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs. So you combine the dry with the gusty winds, and you have a fire threat. Here's today's timeline. Uh, 50s this morning, by the way, it's going to be pretty chilly. Good chances of rain through 11 o'clock, and then it uh, basically just goes away. Gusts to 35, windy this afternoon. Sun pops out, which should get us into the low 60s. Uh, but uh, it, it's going to be cooler tomorrow, I think, despite the fact that we'll have uh, quite a bit of sun. Here's the big picture. Snow with this system. Lubbock up to Wichita Falls, Oklahoma City, Dallas, San Antonio, Houston, all dealing with rain. If you're traveling up I-35 to Dallas today, wet all the way. Basically, most of the day, uh, you're going to be looking at rain. If you're going west, the rain does start to come to an end a little bit later this afternoon. 51 right now in the brothels. We're sitting at 49 with showers reported at the airport. Still stuck at, what, about a quarter of an inch of rain. Hopefully we'll get more. We'll see. There's going to be some pockets, I certainly think, where uh, we're going to see some higher numbers. 48, hello, it is 50 right now, Port SA. Uh, again, KSAC Connect, this is a great way for you to share with us what you're seeing. If you've got some pictures of your rain gauge, you've got some good rain where you are, send it in. We'll share it. We'll share it on the stream or on air coming up a little bit later. So 62 today, 60 tomorrow, 56 Thursday. I'll point out we'll be in the 30s Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday morning. Saturday, we could get another chance of rain right now, about a 30% chance of some showers. So things are looking up. Things are looking up. And I wrote a, an article on KSAD.com if you want to check it out. We were talking about La Nina versus El Nino. We're starting to switch over from La Nina to more of a neutral situation. The next step, hopefully, would be a switch over to El Nino perhaps sometime over the next year or two. And then that would mean a better situation for us. Maybe we can pull out of this drought. Uh, it's, we're kind of in that cycle right now where we're in one of those dry, very dry stretches over the last three years, but we hope things uh, get a little bit better. Today helps, puts a very small dent in the drought, but it helps and we'll take what we can get at this point. Uh, so we'll go back to the uh, radar here real quick. What was that, Don? We have a uh, cut in coming up here with Good Morning America okay. in just a couple of minutes. Okay. So well, I just got to be on the on standby for that. Yeah. I'll let you switch over here, Mike, and I'll just point out that we still have that uh, that nice clump of rain there uh, east of San Antonio.
All right, let's get a look at the roadways right now. US 90 at couples uh, still seeing a pretty big backup out there. And unfortunately, uh, initially what was reported out there was a stalled vehicle, but it's very hard to make out. I'll even step out of the shot so you can take a, a quick look at that. Uh, 90, one of those busy spots again as folks are making their way into the Alamo City. But as I mentioned, uh, a crash was reported by TxDOT just a few moments ago. This is right near Nogalito. So that camera there just showing that pretty big buildup as you can see. Um, we're seeing that on the map. Not a good situation, unfortunately, but uh, unfortunately, yeah, still more issues to track. One issue here along 281 southbound at almost drive. So uh, these are situations that we've been monitoring throughout the morning. Of course, the rain was very much needed. <laughs> I'm not complaining. My grass definitely needed that, but we know the roads also uh, probably needed to be washed out with a lot of that dirt and grime, as Justin Horn mentioned a little bit earlier, but it's definitely caused a few issues out there for drivers. Thankfully, things uh, slowdowns are still being reported, but what we are seeing now it's just a little bit more buildup, and I think that will dwindle down, dwindle down in the next uh, maybe hour or so as folks arrive to their destination. But other than that, we're going to be tracking these roadways uh, for as long as we need to to make sure everyone arrives where they need to be on time and safely, Mike. Yeah, and we're going to be doing the uh, cut in, by the way, in about, uh, say, eight, nine minutes uh, with Good Morning America. So we will uh, break away from that. But we just want to keep you updated on this. And again, because it's been so long since we've seen this on radar, and it is absolutely a, a gorgeous sight. We are starting to keep track of some of the lightning strikes. And just in this picture, we've got a total of 17 lightning strikes out there. So not a lot, but more is going to be forming up right here off to the east of us. And and that's going to be later on today. So here's what it looks like. And we've got this cell, and this is the one we've been watching that is working its way up to the north at about uh, 40, 45 miles per hour. And that has a pretty good cell right there in the middle of it. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to look at uh, the rainfall rate associated with that, and again, we've got to emphasize this isn't how much rain you're going to get, but it means it's blinding. You drive into that. And yeah, it's going to be one of those where it's like somebody just dumped a 55 gallon drum of water on you. So the rainfall rate with that cell right there, and you can see there are a couple of lightning strikes, those white lines. It's coming down at seven inches per hour. So yeah, that is a very, very heavy storm. It is very small, very localized. That will continue to work its way up to the uh, up to the north again at about uh, 40 to 45 miles per hour. So back to uh, radar right now and to take a look at that. And I want to put it into motion to show you how quickly that is moving. So folks in Gray Forest in Leon Springs, you are going to be hitting that. You're already getting some pretty good rain around uh, Fair Oaks Ranch as well as Scenic Oak. So let's uh, then see what the uh, timeline is on that cell as it works its way up to the north to northeast again at about 45 miles per hour. So we're looking at Champion High School right about 830. So in the next 15 minutes, that's going to be affecting you. Bernie High School again right around 830. Same thing uh, Geneva School right at about uh, 830 or just uh, just after 830 this morning as that continues to work its way up to the north. So that's that one cell that's moving straight up uh, just about straight up to the uh, north and that's been the movement with most all of these cells all morning long has been up to the north to northeast and then the entire area of rain has sort of let me zoom out here and uh, the entire area of rain has been continuing to work its way off to the east and most of the area. Now there was a lot more coverage off in some of our western counties earlier today and that is one big problem out to the west where you haven't had any rain and you're not going to be seeing any rain. So unfortunately you're high and dry and with the winds picking up later on today that then increases the fire danger quite a bit and notice how there is it's almost sort of two distinct lines right now this one uh, that cuts up through Pleasanton Floresville just to the east of New Braunfels San Marcos and then the one out there in portions of the hill country and again unfortunately for San Antonio we are kind of stuck in the middle as of right now but we do have a that pretty good cell right there on the southeast side of town, just uh, about moving across 410 and 181. So that again will continue to move up to the north. And I want to zoom in even closer on that and show you exactly where that is right there about Hilltop. And that's going to work up in toward China Grove. And this is also moving off to the uh, north to northeast, roughly 40 miles per hour. That's pretty much rule of thumb as far as how quickly these cells are moving. But again, that's uh, dumping some pretty good rainfall 
fall rates as well on top of that. Now, as far as what's going to be going on, and this has been the forecast all along that this would be primarily a morning event here in town, and then it will transition into the afternoon off to the east, and it's this afternoon when this line is going to start to uh, form up. We do start to see some clearing off there to the west by noon and early afternoon. A lot of sunshine off there to the west of us, and as far as the severe threat, that's the issue off to the east with some of the, the high winds and potential hail. Floresville, Seguin, Carn City, but more of that is going to be further down here. Notice how these colors get darker and darker. So it goes from isolated, scattered to severe. So around Victoria and further off to the east, there's a much, much better chance to see some of those strong to potentially severe storms as we go into later on uh, late this morning and early afternoon. So then on the back side of it, when the front moves on through, winds are going to be gusty today. So we have wind advisories for the hill country. It doesn't include San Antonio or the, the center portion of our area, if you will. But that doesn't mean we're not going to have strong winds. We will have strong winds around here. And then, like I said, where we haven't seen any rain off along the, the Rio Grande, that's where the red flag warning is because things are just so tinder dry out there. Very, very dry air, very low humidity out there. And so with those winds that are going to be gusting 40, 45 miles per hour out to the west, that's why the, the red flag warnings are posted out there. So the front's going to move on through here. And that then again, tends to push all of this off to the east. We get the gusty winds in behind it, and we're also going to see a lot more sunshine around here. And as things clear out, then as the winds settle down tonight, it's going to be cool this afternoon. I mean, windy conditions, low 60s. Yeah, jacket's a pretty good idea. And then going into tonight, once the winds subside, then things are really going to cool down. And this whole system, which this one finally moved a little bit further to the south, unlike the last few that have pulled the fronts through here. And, you know, it's like all the rain has just been just beyond arm's reach. This one has moved on through, and that's what's uh, going to really pull down and allow us to get very, very cold temperatures as we clear on out tonight. And that's what also brought us the rain. So right now we are in the 40s, couple of 50s around here. We're not going to move all that much as far as uh, temperatures are concerned. And we haven't been getting any good uh, shots of the rain. Send in some of those rain pictures for us. We'd love to show that. It's a great way for us to tell the story around here as far as what is going on, what has been going on. It if you've seen rain, some of your uh, rain gauges, because out at the airport, it's only been still just two, uh, two tenths of an inch of rain, Justin, officially out the airport. 2300. 2300s. 2300s now. We're okay, just so. Barely moving up. So, but as the, some of those showers move on through here, we will get some more rain. Uh, but maybe you've gotten a whole lot more off to the west, off to the east. That one cell that moved through right around uh, Casterville Divine earlier this morning. But very cold the next couple of mornings. We're well down into the 30s, and that's going to. I mean, that's here in town. A nice rule of thumb a lot of times is subtract about 10 degrees going out into some of those the portions of the hill country. So we're looking at a good hard freeze the next few mornings in the hill country. Plenty of sunshine. Another front's going to move on through here by late in the weekend. Looks like uh, maybe about midday on Sunday. We might have a few leftover showers early on Sunday and that, that chance of rain around here on Saturday. Still going to be warm, then some cooler air is going to be sliding on in here. So at least it's nice that it's back to kind of a, a January forecast. The only day that is uh, definitely on the warm side is really going to be Sunday. Now, obviously warm because of the cloud cover around here on Saturday morning. But uh, yeah, it's nice to see some of these January temperatures. Anything new on the, the high? Oh, goodness gracious, that fog has moved on in there over there by the is that uh, 410 I-10. 410 yeah, and so I it is definitely kind of soupy out there. Any uh, new problems on the roads, well, that's Stephen? Not something you want. Oh, no problems just yet. Same issues that are being reported out there. Uh, roadways here along US 90, things are moving along without any trouble. We did have a crash that was reported out there along those eastbound lanes as you approach Nogalitos, but uh, looks like that slowdown is just a slowdown. Uh, the crash looks like it has already cleared out, so that's better news to report out there. But uh, again, the issues have pretty much stayed the same. 281 uh, southbound. This is really probably the only big issue we have right now. Those southbound lanes of 281, uh, we are seeing back to back traffic out there, and that is because of that. A crash we mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, 281 has had its fair share of problems this morning, but as we give you now a wide look at the map, 
This is actually a lot better. Uh, you know, morning rush, we're pretty much through with it, but uh, it does look like some folks are still trying to make their way to their destination. Just remember to drive safe. Roads obviously are still wet out there, but it doesn't look as bad as what we saw earlier. There have been numerous crashes reported, and just because uh, slowdowns are improving doesn't mean that the situations have stopped. Of course, we know that there are some stalled vehicles out there. Make sure you check your vehicles, windshield wipers before you get going. Uh, but other than that, here along 90s at Cup 90 at Couples, it's just a a better situation and really from some of these trans guide cameras that I have over here, uh, everything looks to be moving along just fine. And now the only thing is now we have a few wet roads, so we have to make sure that we drive safe out there. Let's get you on rotation really quick. Um, yeah, you can see 90 a couples that same spot that we have been showing you uh, looks to have improved, but 281 at San Pedro, uh, not not a bad shot there with traffic at this point, but again, just an improvement from where we started a lot earlier. So uh, that's always good news to report, especially as uh, we are getting ready to wrap up the heart of the morning commute, guys. Yeah, and a lot of this rain hit right at the beginning, yeah. you know, right leading up to the morning commute. And as we were yeah. talking about, that's when, you know, you, the initial rain mixes with all the, the stuff. On, how the did you put it, Justin? The, the, grime, the grime. The grime on the road, the dust, the dirt, yeah. all the oil, <laughs> everything like that. And that's when things are slippery. And that's when we saw some of our biggest problems yeah. out there. Uh, starting at 4:30, you know, really that's a uh, first big incident around 35 at Von Orme. Uh took a while to clear out both those north and southbound lanes shut down because that was on both sides of the road. So we're going to be uh, stopping here for one second as we get ready to do our weather cut in. I'm kind of keeping an eye on Good Morning America and Ginger Z and we're going to be uh, going to be cutting in, in just one moment. This is kind of like that conversation that lulls. Something to say as I'm waiting. <laughs> Here we go. Good morning, everyone. And we do still have some rain around the area right now. Uh, haven't had a lot in and around San Antonio. We were kind of in between areas, but we still have some of these good showers and a lot more off to the east. And these are going to continue to build throughout the rest of the morning and then going into the afternoon hours. This will all continue to work its way off to the east and we're going to start to clear on clear on out to the west. We're in the 40s right now and we're looking forward to a high temperature today of 62 and it's going to be very windy winds out of the west at 20 to 25 miles per hour. And then we go back to Good Morning America and we are still live streaming on here. So, all right, we've got uh, the rain, which continues and we're again not seeing anything. Now the movement eastward and correct me if I'm wrong, Justin, I really we haven't mm -hmm. really seen much of this uh, shifting off to the east. Just these lines that continue. This moves up to the north to northeast and this line over here, which is going on is on a Pearsall, Divine, Medina Lake, Bernie line. Uh, and this has not shifted yet, but this will continue to shift off to the east and kind of get pushed along out ahead of that front that will work its way through here. But the front's going to be moving through in about timing wise. We're looking at uh, say two and a half hours to come on through here. It is going to get very windy in behind the front. Yes, with the clearing skies, we will warm up in behind that and that's going to put us up into the low 60s. So we are going to be right around a normal high temperature later on today. And you know, it, it's funny because it seems like for the first part of January to say normal high temperature was just not in our forecast at all because we stayed so very warm for the longest time. But up in you know the past few days, we've been right at normal temperatures and that's pretty much what we're looking forward to. Then the rest of the week actually on the, the cool side, as far as lows are concerned, we're going to be well down into the uh, the 30s. All right, this cell that has been working its way in from just about Elmendorf is now moving there in toward Seguin and that's coming down at a fairly good clip right there and you've had these showers working its way one on top of the other. So let's check out what uh, some of the rainfall has been at least some of the estimated rainfall around the area. And again, it's been that one line right here from Floresville up through uh, Lavernia and into Seguin. Some of the uh, numbers and these are just some radar estimates right here. But we've had a few heavier spots. OK, three quarters of an inch of rain um, just uh, near Seguin, about the same situation. And then notice how in and around San Antonio, it has not been anywhere near as much. We're looking at 
you know, what is that? Less than a quarter of an inch of rain, maybe an eighth of an inch of rain here and there, two tenths down to the uh, southeast. And then further off to the east, we've been seeing, uh, further off to the west, I should say, we have been seeing just these couple of little pockets here. But again, nothing overly extreme right here in and around Bernie. Again, we're looking at the seven tenths of an inch of rain, maybe a little bit more than uh, one inch right there. So it hasn't been anything too outrageously heavy there at uh, Bandera. And let me turn this back on here very quickly. And we've got that one estimate there. So just under one inch of rain. So some of those darker green spots in there are the heaviest rainfall amounts. We're looking at more rain further off to the east. Hopefully we get some more. Our, our lawns are loving this. I mean, we haven't had this much rain since going back all the way into the middle of December. We had three tenths of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport. I believe it was on the 19th of uh, of December. No, middle more toward the middle of the month. No, 19th, I believe of December. And so it has been a long, long time since you know, any of this, you know, it's just been soaked up by my grass. Hopefully that greens things up a little bit. We could have used a lot more, but uh, unfortunately that is not going to be the case. So we are going to uh, kind of regroup here a little bit. We've got another cut in coming up here. This is one of our longer cut ins. So we're going to pause and then on air, Stephen is going to be talking traffic. So we'll be back with you in just a moment. Time check. We are now at 827. All right, let's get to those roadways. 35 at Judson. Uh, not a bad shot, actually. We've been seeing slowdowns. We've been seeing those wet roads. We have been uh, detecting those crashes. So yeah, the morning commute has been riddled with trouble, but it looks like we're finally getting a little bit of relief on the roadways. Uh, check out 37 at Houston. So moving traffic in those northbound lanes, but we did have uh, some issues here in town. So we're going to start right here along the map. US 90 eastbound in Ogalitas. We did have a crash that was reported out there that was causing a pretty big slowdown for drivers. Looks like that slowdown has dwindled down and I'm not seeing that crash reported by TxDOT anymore. So I'm going to get that off of our map so we don't have to worry about it. But watch out carefully there. 281 southbound at almost uh, we have that crash still being reported by TxDOT and it's right as you approach Hildebrand. Remember to slow down as you get to that curve. We've had our fair share of issues out there as well, but those southbound lanes are seeing a little bit of a buildup. Uh, other than that, it's really at this point, Mike, it's going to be buildups and some wet roads that drivers need to be on the lookout for right now. Yeah, and we still have some rain out there as well. So here's a live look out there by the airport and it's really not a bad looking picture. The roads are still damp. We haven't had a lot of rain in and around uh, the airport in. Oh gosh, it's been about an hour or so at last check. It's been just shy of one quarter of an inch, a lot more off to the east. Now, as of right now, these two bands of rain, one to the uh, right scraping by the western edge of Bear County is sliding up to the north to northeast and then also from Floresville up in toward uh, Seguin and heading toward San Marcos. Those have been sort of going one right after another. We've had inch, uh, maybe inch and a half rain amounts on the uh, the ends there. Now all this will continue to work its way across the area as a front pushes on through here later on this morning. Gonna have to watch out for more rain and perhaps some strong storms off to the east and then some clearing very windy as well. Winds gusting in a high today of 62. Right, welcome back. We're still streaming with you on the app and on the website. If you're joining us there, uh, we're going to go for a little bit while longer. We're not talking about, we're not here to talk about severe weather. It's not there. Uh, we just had some good downpours. We're just here to chat with you, talk about the rain, get you up to date on what's going on uh, with all these showers and, and storms. Some good news. I was just over there while Mike was doing those cut-ins, updating the, uh, the uh, pollen count, and Mountain Cedar dro dropped all the way down to 70 for today. Maybe got washed out of the atmosphere a little bit. It should have. It should have been better uh, because we're all ready to get rid of that. Hasn't been a horrible season, but we're still ready to get rid of Mountain Cedar. So some really good news there. You want to check it out. We just updated that on the app and on the website as well. Should be coming through any minute. Uh, as we look at the live radar here, Mike pointed out we had that area of rain off the east of San Antonio. Some of those heavier uh, downpours. Uh, we see those up around New Braunfels and Seguin. In fact, I'm going to zoom in on the city of Seguin here because you're getting hit with some pretty good rain right now. Uh, and this is a welcome sight, I'm sure, for a lot of people in Seguin. 
There's the city right there. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. There's Seguin High School. Good heavy rain for you, where you see these red colors. That represents uh, some the heaviest of the rain that you can see here on the radar. It's that kind of rain where you're going to have to use the windshield wipers probably on full blast. You get down towards uh, south and west of town, and uh, we're still seeing some good rain there too. So this should add up pretty nicely. And in fact, it uh, looks like that Heaviest of the stuff it just uh, with the radar update just moved north of Seguin now. So McQueenie, you're getting in on some good rain. So we can pause this and then look at the rainfall totals. Uh, we'll look at the 12-hour rain and see what kind of numbers. These are estimates, keep in mind. Closing in on an inch there in Seguin. That would be fantastic. Uh, again, if you have pictures of your rain gauges, you can send them in KSAT Connect. That's on the KSAT Weather app at the bottom. You'll see the tab. Send in the picture. Great to see. Oh, we can get some ground truth out of it. But uh, we're closing down on an inch, I think, in a lot of these spots around Seguin and points south. So fantastic news there. And we'll go back to the radar, zoom out. So that's kind of this cluster here that stretches from Luling down to Seguin. So some blinding rain between Seguin and Luling on I-10. Uh, that's not going to be a fun drive if uh, you know anyone making that drive today. Stockdale, Forestville, Poth. We mentioned that the rain was going to be moving into Poth here pretty soon along 181. There it is. Falls City, Carn City, you're getting rain too. And uh, we'll zoom in a little bit closer on Poth. Yeah, heavy rain moving in. It's, it's just rain though. We haven't seen really any lightning strikes. And I want to go back to San Antonio. Um, you know, feels like we're missing out again, at least a little bit. We've got the heavy stuff off to the east, some heavier stuff off to the west here in San Antonio. It's just been kind of hit or miss right now. We got good rain earlier, or at least steady rain. Uh, we do notice there is this nice little cell up here around Windcrest, Converse. We'll zoom in a little bit closer there. If you're watching us from Converse this morning, there's FM 78. Rain's just about to move in uh, to your neighborhood. And uh, again, we're not really seeing lightning strikes with this, the lightning counter. Nope, no lightning strikes. Uh, this is uh, just good downpour. And that may cause, uh, you know, for some slick streets. We haven't had a whole lot of, uh, we're not going to see any flooding or anything like that. It's just not enough rain to do that. But if you get underneath one of these heavier downpours, it's possible there could be some very minor street flooding briefly. Uh, out towards I-10, 1604, I'm going to turn this off. Uh, a little bit of rain there. Just west of Chavano Park near Clark High School in the rim. Some rain falling there. And we'll go out west around uh, Holotus. Little cell there for the uh, northwest side. Uh, we'll go in closer. That's, well, just northwest of Holotus there along Highway 16. San Geronimo, some rain for you. And uh, Medina, Medina Lake, Hondo, Divine, all getting some rain. But notice the south side of San Antonio is nothing at this at this time. Now, this area of lift should work its way into town here over the next couple of hours. And I do you think we'll see a little bit more here in San Antonio, but I don't think we're going to make it up to an inch of rainfall like we'd hoped. So far, only about a quarter of an inch at the airport. And uh, looking over at uh, Medina County, Castroville, Rio Medina, Divine, Moore, seeing these uh, downpours here and there. And uh, by the way, Stephen, if uh, you need to go work on some other stuff, I think we, we can cover the rest of the weather. If you're good to go, man, we appreciate you. Stephen's a bit of a hardworking man this morning. He's got a lot going on over there. Uh, he's got some stories he's got to go right to, so we're going to let him go do that. Uh, and we'll keep tabs on traffic. But for the most part, as he said, things are getting, getting better, uh, even though there are still some slick roads out there. Uh, Medina Lake, uh, seeing the rain there around, uh, around the lake itself. This is not going to fill up the lake. It's just not, but uh, at least there is some rain there. And uh, look at this cell here near Fair Oaks Ranch. That's, uh, that's a pretty heavy looking cell. I, I don't think there is uh, any hail with this or anything like that, uh, but this is going to produce some really good heavy rain there just west of Fair Oaks Ranch, uh, just south of Bernie. I'll zoom in a little bit closer. There's the Geneva School. It's just to the east of that uh, where we're seeing this area where there's probably just some blinding rain at this point. So that's kind of the nature of this activity where you're getting these uh, passing heavy downpours that uh, work their way through uh, San Antonio and uh, around the area this morning. And they're all racing. I mean, they're moving 40, 45 miles per hour off to the north. If you put it into motion, they're not going to stick around in any one place too long. So that's why the rainfall totals haven't been huge. But if you get some of this training, you know, here floors fill up to Seguin, and we mentioned Seguin's closing in on an inch of rain, then yeah, you, you may uh, you get some better numbers, certainly than what we're seeing here in San Antonio.
that's unfortunate. Quick, quick interjection. Uh, yeah. You're talking about that storm cell right there around um, Geneva School up there in Bernie. A yeah. uh, little applause for our radar system because yeah. it was tracking that earlier and it had said that by about 8.30 it was going to be right there around Champion High School, right around Geneva School. So, yeah, this, uh, this radar system is very, very good with tracking some of these cells. It is great. And uh, I mentioned that cell in particular looks looks a little nasty that's not severe but one thing we can do is we can put on our threats map uh, where is it threats there it is and uh, that, where you see that black color it's gonna try to tell me there's hail there I don't I'm not convinced of that but it is saying there is it's detecting some hail with the radar we'd have to get some ground truth there uh, and see if we uh, have any pictures or anyone observing some hail so uh, can't be ruled out here. I don't think that's really the main threat today, but um, that's what the uh, the radar is showing at this time. Uh, maybe some hail mixed in with that uh, particular cell. Uh, and the reflectivity is pretty high there. We see that purple color right there. We, we would have to watch out for something like that, but this is not severe or anything like that. Uh, We'll keep close tabs on it. This is, uh, this is moving north. We probably should put a track here on the storm and let you know where it's headed. And see, it just updated. And, that's, again, kind of the nature of this. And now that purple is gone. It's probably weakened a little bit. But I'll still put a track here. Uh, let's see. And you know what? I'm going to have to zoom out some. Because these things are moving quickly. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's try this again. Boom. And we'll say 40. So, Flugrath. That's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Flugrath, 903. Uh, Rocky Creek, 918. Uh, that's up in Blanco County, uh, but that's where that storm would be headed uh, if you're uh, watching from that area there this morning. We'll take this off and put it back on the home page. And again, it's just it's kind of like we have one line here and then another line here and San Antonio is kind of caught in no man's land there. But I think that uh, this this area of lift will slowly work its way towards San Antonio and put down some more rain before everything ends. And I know if you're watching from the West, you're saying, man, what about us? Well, it's just. Uh, that's kind of the way things go these days. It's, it's, uh, it's hard because of the, the dry air and to get rain that far west, but we just we didn't see a whole lot out west. And what we can do here with the big picture actually is uh, look at rainfall on a, on a grander scale. And we'll do 12-hour uh, rainfall totals. And you can kind of see where the heavy, heavy swaths of rain have been. Right there, we talked about Seguin down the Floresville. So that's where we would probably estimate three quarters of an inch up to an inch. That's showing 0.7. That's showing 0.8. I'd say a quarter, uh, three quarters of an inch up to an inch in this area where you see the green. And then up around Bernie and uh, near Bandera, picking up about the same number. If you're around San Antonio, eh, not as good. Three tenths maybe on the north side there. So uh, it's, it's we just kind of been caught in between the higher rainfall totals, unfortunately. Uh, and you can see kind of where it ends. You go west of Uvalde, nothing, nothing, at least not much. Uh, so that's, that's not great. And that's why there is uh, red flag warnings, in effect, out west, because uh, they did not get rain, and they'll get gusty winds today. This is another look at the future cast by 11 o'clock. That line moving east, starting to move towards Gonzales, and this is where they could intensify a little bit. So I want to keep a close eye on Howitzville, Quero, Victoria today. That's where we could see some stronger storms. And then by 2 o'clock, things are starting to quiet down, but the winds pick up. Gusty winds, and this is a side of the system that we don't want to forget about because by this afternoon, we're going to get gusts 30 to 35. Trash cans, they'll be down the street. It's your trash day, unless you have a lot of trash in there, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, but just be aware that uh, the trash cans, if they're empty, could be blowing down the street. Uh, and uh, anything, you know, you don't have tied down in your yard, whatever, could be blowing around. 27 gusts by tonight. Winds will start to calm, and then we mentioned the severe weather risk. Uh, it's going to be highest on the Texas coast, so Victoria over to Houston, but even some of our eastern counties we've got to keep an eye on uh, here for the next couple of hours as this line progresses. Uh, wind advisory out west, that's where we could see those gusts, maybe even up to 40, and that's also where we could see that fire threat. That's the red flag warning. Here's the timeline really quick, and I think after this we'll probably wrap things up and uh, get ready for our 9 a.m. show if you want to join us there. Uh, we'll also be streaming again at 11 o'clock on KNN, KSAT News Now. 
uh, which great program if you haven't seen it. 55 by 11 o'clock, 59, 1 p.m., 61, 3 o'clock, turns windy. Our rain chances go away. So this afternoon will be fine. It'll just be windy. And there's the big picture. A lot of issues up around Lubbock and Amarillo with snow. Wichita Falls, same story. We are not expecting wintry weather here. Those temperatures will eventually warm up. I'm going to get on over to the seven-day forecast, close things out here. Unless, Mike, unless you had anything else you wanted to add. No, 60 it, that's, that pretty much, I think, sums it up. You know, like yeah. you said, we'll have to watch off to the east later on today. But, right. uh, yeah. Yeah, I wish, the, I wish the rainfall tolls were higher in San Antonio, but that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. A 60 on Wednesday, 56 Thursday, 59 Friday, mostly cloudy. We will get another chance of rain. Probably not as fruitful as this go-round, but some chances nonetheless on Saturday uh, before we cool down again going into the start of next week. We truly appreciate you joining us here on the stream where we try to do this as often as we can. allows you to get weather on demand when you want it, when you need it, on your KSAT app on ksat.com as well. And uh, we'll see you if you'd like to join us at 9 a.m. Have a great day.